Yeah. Okay, this Songs is the pre-show. Begin with G. <laughs> <laughs> this is the pre-show. It's going to be a fun show today. It's a Tuesday, March 28, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. Happy birthday to Jake Ellenberger, who will be a guest of ours today. 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern. Is that what we finally locked him down on? Or did he go for the 1040? No, he couldn't do the 1040. All right, so yeah. 2 time. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. And then uh, we have a fun panel here. Dan Tom to the fight to to the far right. He is a fight analyst, and you can follow him on Twitter at the MMA analyst or at the MM analyst or the MM anal YST. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Stup, uh, aka Stand Up. He's the co-founder of MMA Junkie. He had so much fun yesterday that he decided to come back. Uh, and of course, goes and I. So it's gonna be a fun show. And this time, I promise I will look at Facebook because I uh, there's a request goes for me to get stun gunned. Apparently, when Megan Olivia was here, I did say go ahead and leave a question on Facebook or or YouTube, and oh. I forgot to go back and look. But you know what's happening? I'll try and explain it as best as I can because we are gonna start the show soon. When we do have the in studio guests, I tend to fall back a little, and that way there's a sight line between goes and the guest, and. Uh, I pull away from my computer, but here's another thing. I used to have a 17-inch computer. I also used to have better vision, and both have gone away. So now I, ha I, I uh, downgraded to just a 13-inch, and then my vision's just, you know, it's not what it used to be. It's not as sharp, so I really have to kind of get up close. I can only have one screen open. With the 17 you used to pride yourself on your vision. Oh, that yeah, yeah. For you. It allowed me to have, you know, four different open windows. So I I I, uh, I really looked into maybe Best Buy 18 months, 12 months, no interest they have, mm -hmm. and uh, getting a a bigger one I guess. Now they don't make the 17 inch anymore; they make the 15 inch. But so that's what's kind of happening. That and the fact that, that you know those times where Megan was just on fire. You know I I thought we we had some good conversation. We took some calls. We had a guest towards the end. One John Orlando came in, came in for a bit. You know he's cracking us up. So I just I I don't know. I took my mind off uh, what I had said. So I apologize to those that had wanted to leave her a conversation. Here's the crazy thing, though. You know, they could have picked up the phone and called in and asked her the question as well. Yeah, we yeah. give that option. Uh-huh. And I worked in the corporate girls. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, like in the corporate too. world. <laughs> hey. I, I, there was some girls that got worked over in the corporate world. No, but you know what? I know how to step away. If you're sharp, oh, there just, there's that piss that built up, you know. Yeah. I got to go to the restroom. I'll be right back. Or I forgot something in my car. Unless you're doing it every day, nobody should bat an eye. And so you disappear, five, ten minutes, make that quick call, boom. That said, if you do it and you lose your job, hey, that's your bad. Uh, I did not ec recommend to do it. It was just a suggestion to those of us that are, are sharp and can pull it off. Here we go. It's the MMA Junkie Radio Show. This is your captain speaking. We are making our descent into Las Vegas McCarran Airport. On behalf of our crew, we'd like to thank you for flying MMA Junkie Airlines. Now please fasten your seatbelts and put your tray tables in your upright position because the descent is going to be a little bit bumpy. <laughs> All right, Junkie Nation, it's time to roll, baby, on MMA Junkie Radio with gorgeous George and Goat. This is what we do and why we do it, baby. All night long, we roll it! Yes! The MMA Junkie Radio Revolution is upon us. Can you dig it? There's no escape. No escape. Through the vast frontier of cyberspace and through a sea of stars in outer space. One small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We've solidified our combat communication stranglehold. We are controlling transmission. With the use of MMA Junkie Radio and Sirius XM satellite radio technology. MMA Junkie Radio. Commence transmission. Live from MMA Junkie Radio HQ in the fight capital of the world. Las Vegas, Nevada. Here are your hosts, Gorgeous George and Go. From the fight capital of the world inside the beautiful Mandalay Bay Race and Sportsbook, you are listening to the MMA Junkie Radio Show, the only show that matters. I'm your host, Gorgeous George. With me, as always, 
the Devious and Dastardly goes. Ari's co-host, back east, handling all the producing duties today. It's going to be Sam. Now, sitting to my right, my far right, a distinguished panel that we've put together for today. Dan Tom, the MMA analyst, he's back. He's uh, one of the best fight analysts in the game. He's also fought, and he's a proud member of Extreme Couture, local Vegas guy. He comes in often. What's up, Dan? How you doing? What's going on, guys? Good to be here. All right, good to have you. And, of course, the co-founder of MMA Junkie, along with him being our editor-in-chief, Dan Stupp. What's up, Dan? The real Dan. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> two ends. Yeah, how are we going to do that today? There can be only one. Stand up, Dan Tom. All right. Yeah. That'll work. Mm-hmm. 866-522-2846. I need to throw out that number more often, I've been told. So I'm going to do it. That's the number to call in. It's a live show here on a Tuesday. And it's uh, March 28th, also known as Jake Ellenberger's birthday. He'll be on the show, coincidentally. And he's got a fight coming up against Mike Perry. It's not until April, but we kind of want to see where he's at mid-camp. And it's also his birthday, so it'd be nice to wish him a, a happy birthday. So we'll talk to him at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. And then we're going to talk about the latest news, you know, discuss some topics. I got some good feedback on our discussions towards weight cutting. Yeah, so I have a couple emails and stuff. Yeah, and I want to read some of those and maybe continue uh, continue down that that path because it's, it's a very important topic. So possibly revisit that and, and uh, some of the latest news and, of course, take your calls. Again, that number is 866-522-2846. In fact, the phone calls are lighting up as we speak. Three lines are wide open. So get in there. Sam will uh, patch you through, and we'll we'll definitely punch you in in this first hour. We'll have time in the second hour as well after the Ellen Burger interview. So anyway, fellas, how you doing? Dan, Tom, what's uh, the latest with you? Been a couple weeks since we've seen you. I've uh, been been keeping busy. You know, we actually got a nice little break here, which is kind of rare with the UFC <laughs> no, shows, yeah. right? Um, but 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 I've been I've been, I've been being a good boy, using it to stay busy and. Uh, getting ahead because we got some fun cards and stuff coming up ahead uh you know multiple organizations but once that ufc machine gets rolling again you guys know it, do, it, it doesn't stop so uh mm. so i'm just i'm just preparing for what's ahead and ex excited for what's ahead there's, there's a lot to get excited for yeah it's funny because we want the break sometimes mm -hmm. when they just pile so many shows we want the break and when we have the break, we don't know what to do with ourselves. Yeah, well, I, what I love about it is, I'm, I'm, I'm for example, I'm, I'm looking at 210 matchups right now. That's the next card, right, UFC 210. And it reminds me, like, back in the day where we actually had these build-up to these matches where, you know, hardcores like us would chop it up. And there was plenty of room for arguments, discussions, breakdowns. So I, I'm, I'm definitely relishing these little, these little build-up times before these nice cards. Yeah, and then, you know, that one's been in the works for a while. Yeah. So yeah. we've had time to definitely dissect it and talk about it and... I can't imagine what it's like for those athletes to just be waiting and waiting and waiting and go through a series of camps because there has been an injury, so there has been, you know, uh, the fight, I guess, being postponed per se. But I'm glad it, it finally gets down. Knock on wood. No injuries. Yeah. That's a good one. So is Musasi and Weidman. We slightly touched on it oh, yeah. yesterday, but uh, I'm really, really looking forward to that one. Dan Stupp, uh, how'd you do? Did you hit the tables? What'd you do after we saw you yesterday? I was going to go to bed. And then I couldn't sleep. My internal clock was all screwed up. So I went down to just poke around and end up playing a little bit of blackjack at a, a really fun table. I lost a little money, but I got pretty drunk. So I think. Did you really? The, yeah, I think in the end I came out ahead. What's your poison? <laughs> Is it the fat tire or you have another favorite beer out here? They wouldn't do fat tire at the table. So I had to go with Corona, which seemed like a good idea up until about three in the morning when I woke up with like the worst dry mouth. And, oh, yeah. You know, and like it. Plus the combination of lack of sleep, mm -hmm. and it just – I should have gone to bed. Juliet cooked me an awesome dinner last night. I came over and saw these jabronis <laughs> and had a, a Max and, and had a really good time. Oh, I thought that's who you meant. Oh, so I'm one of them. Okay. Yeah, no. I yeah. thought Max and goes with the jabronis. No, 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 no. Uh, Max, Max is no jabroni. But, mm -hmm. um, but anyway, I should have just gone to bed with a, a good meal in my stomach, so then I woke up feeling pretty crappy. But That's what Vegas does. I'm it I grabs you and it shakes you and then – throws you on that plane and says we'll see you in a few months it's my vacation kind of i'm squeezing in some meetings but i get to be dumb and, and young mm -hmm. and pretend i'm young and, and can handle my liquor but i, I clearly can't well, when was the last time you were in vegas by the way i was trying to figure that out um, was it the last summit that usa today had or is that our 2000th show yeah i think it was when was the 2000th was that last no it was 2015 we yeah. skipped the year of the junkie gathering. I was thinking I had been out here before then, but I don't think I had. I guess that was the last time. So yeah. Yeah, it's been a while. Mm -hmm. Hey, and, and uh, you know, our, our thoughts and prayers go out with a couple incidents here in Vegas. And let me tell you, man, Vegas is really, really a safe city, spe especially around the Strip. But 
two that happened over this past weekend. Uh, a couple guys robbed a Rolex store at the Bellagio, and I think they've already apprehended there. And, and then uh, some other lunatic was waving a gun or something like that at the Cosmo, um, right? He was on a bus at the Cosmo. I think. That's where they finished. That's yeah. where they he gave up, or what, what would we say? I guess they finally surrendered. He yeah, surrendered. But, you know, people were giving us well wishes. Hope everything's okay because, you know, when you hear the news, sometimes you don't dive into the story. You just hear people were hurt or somebody's died mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. So thanks for the, you know, everybody looking out and hollering at us. But we're okay. And, and uh, luckily that wasn't – those incidents weren't as some of the, the bad ones that we've heard of lately. I think France got – oh, no, somebody – London yeah. a few weeks ago or about a week ago. They had some guy there. Um well, remember it's we act had of terrorism, uh, right? The strip. Remember that person that ran over like oh, three people. Oh, that yeah, was yeah, bad. Yeah, that was pretty rough. Um, I wanted to bring something up that I didn't bring up yesterday because we were talking. We had a little bit of break, but in a way, we kind of didn't, right? Because we had Invicta, and if you watched Access TV, I don't know if you guys caught this, but uh, when Pat Miletic had to take off his headset in the middle of the broadcast, and somebody had asked what had happened. And Michael Chavello, he has this way of describing things. I don't think he knows he's as funny as he is, but the way, because of his, his accent and just the terms he uses is so funny. But this is what he tweeted, okay? Mm -hmm. That somebody asked him, what happened? And he said, some monkey comes up, to, comes up and asks Pat if he has an Android charger while Pat is commentating. What a banana. <laughs> 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 a banana. And a monkey, monkey, dude. Oh, my God. It cracks me up so much. Wow. What a banana. <laughs> what a banana. <laughs> I <laughs> wonder if it. that's even more derogatory <laughs> down under. Oh, my God. I was going to say, you never know if it's like a, a term that they use down there, if he's right. just a little batshit crazy. Yeah, because he's, <laughs> he's got a ton of them. He'll call people like the funniest names, and you just look at it, and you go, wait a minute, is that insulting or is it not? It's kind of like... Have, and he stayed within the family. He used a monkey and a banana. Yeah, and like when's the last time... Have you ever been called... I got called a dweeb two weeks ago <laughs> and i haven't even heard that term in about 10 years mm -hmm. but when you hear one of those terms come back an old up, school one you go shit did i just get blasted? a maroon or something a like maroon, that yeah. yeah all those yeah in fact uh, oh you know what by bringing that up actually maroon sort of de derogatory mm -hmm. i looked it up one time years ago I, I can't remember but it had to do i used to hear that on bugs bunny and i guess it would be bugs that would say it he just go what a maroon is he's eating his yeah. carrot but i think he he actually um Used it towards Geronimo, where that little Indian, you know, I'm going to have rabbit stew. Remember, he'd cut up the, yeah. the, the carrots and a few other things, and he actually tricked Bugs Bunny into going into the, the big, what do we call that, pot, cauldron? I don't mm -hmm. know. And um, But maroon can be a derogatory term really? towards uh, Native it, Americans. If it was wow. used in a cartoon wow. that's older than about 30 or 40 years, you can just count on it being racist. Yeah, that's yeah. true, like too. Stay away from yeah. it. Yeah, or <laughs> I think I read something like dark-skinned individuals, something like that. I go, whoa. Now, that was more as an adult as I had, had heard that. But uh, as a kid, I heard it a lot. So, you know, you're influenced by that. You hear something funny, you laugh, and then next thing you know, you know, fifth grade, somebody says something, you go, look at this maroon. Um, but we don't know any better. Yeah. So yeah, well, my goal is to call. Someone I don't know a what a, a banana is. You know, I want to call someone a banana at least twice this week. Two mm -hmm. moments where I go, "What a banana!" and hopefully we can bring <laughs> that around to something. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is since Chevelle has been on the show, I'm really careful about saying that I'll root for a guy. Oh, yeah. that's <laughs> right. right. That's that's rooting is sex, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I'll root for him all day long. <laughs> a trunk, a trunk is a boot, like, and a cookie right is now. a biscuit. Yeah. A what? A trunk is a boot, right? And a cookie is a biscuit. Yeah. Every time he comes in here, he tries to show us something new. Yeah, there was a few that that he taught us. All right. So again, eight six six five two 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 eight four six is the number to call in. And uh, this is Dan's last appearance till uh, for a few months until he'll be back for the Junkie Gathering. So if you have any questions, uh. As far as the editorial side, he's the man to uh, answer them. So here we go. Let's take some calls. We'll start off with Proteus, Ontario, Canada, if I'm not mistaken. I got that right, right, Proteus? Ontario, Canada? That's your province? You did. Yes, sir. You did get it right. Thank you very much. What's Good morning, on? dude. Good morning. I'm just going to keep it off topic, if that's okay with you guys. Um, hello, Dan. Uh, Mr. Dan Stuff, how are you? And, of course, the MM, MM analyst. Follow him on Twitter. At MM Analyst. How are you guys today? Good, thank you. Peachy. What, what's up, buddy? Thanks. Hey. Not much. You're welcome. Um, listen, I'm just uh, was enjoying yesterday's show. Great uh, conversation about weight cutting and 
George, I wanted to, uh, uh, I thought it was really, really cool of you to bring our conversation around. I know no, it's kind of separate from this show, but the conversation that we had about Tito Ortiz and weight cutting, and it was cool to have to, to have it go full circle yesterday with Tito and, you know, c- kind of confirm all of the things that you were saying to me when we had our conversation. It was, it was just really cool to see it go around and get answers from the, the horse's mouth itself. Well, you know, I'm glad you enjoyed it, and thank you guys again for having me. It was a blast. It was during March Madness, and like I told you guys that night, I had had a few of my Coronas and Heinekens, so hopefully I wasn't too sloppy for your audience, but uh, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed yesterday's interview. No, not at all. Frosty beverages are always welcome uh, on this show, uh, on our show, uh, at least my show. So, um, <laughs> Guys, quickly, um, just to go back to Friday's call with Hal, um, and his top 10 list. I know a lot of new listeners probably didn't get the meaning behind that, but, uh, you know, for me, it brought back a lot of memories that, you know, Johnny Rico and, and Fisher and, and Hal and, and uh, Budo, of course, our boy, uh, rest in peace, brother. Um, you know, when they were regulars, you know, when, uh, when they were the guys that I was listening to, looking forward to the co- more to the awards, the callers than the, uh, to the fighters. So, just wanted to bring that up and say, uh, Hal, thanks for bringing back a lot of memories, brother. It's, it's why we listen to this show and it's, you know, why we love on MMA so much because uh, Junkie Nation is just so strong. Awesome, man. Uh, you know, you said Rick Budo, and it, it not much time goes by, man, when I don't think about that guy, whether it's just West Ham yeah. United, IPAs. The other day I was with Juliet and we are having breakfast, and, and I told her, hey, where'd that Union Jack go? Because that's one of the few IPAs that I've had, and it was really good. And I explained to her how there was a Sunday following his passing that everybody agreed to have to watch Man, uh, West Ham United and and have an IPA in his honor. And I thought, man, how cool is that? People are all around the world did this and tweeted their pictures or posted them on Facebook. And I thought, you know, a little pat on the back, I guess, for just junkie nation, I, kind of what we've created and how everybody's so cool with each other like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and she thought that was pretty cool to hear. And they won cool the hear. game in the last they like, did. 10 minutes. They so did. We really all felt like it was the power of Budo that, you know, uh, <laughs> helped the uh, the hammers come through. Uh, last thing before I get out of here, guys. Um, I, again, I know DJ Tony thanked you yesterday, Dan, but thank you guys all very much uh, for what you've done for us. And, and uh, yeah, thanks again. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. All right. See you, Proteus. It's true, Dan. You know, you're the co-founder of I mean, Junkie, and uh, whatever Junkie Nation started from this show, I mean, really, you're kind of like the, you know, the original. Catalyst. Yeah, the catalyst all that. I think you jabronis would have found each other regardless of Junkie. Mm-hmm. Like, you know. <laughs> I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 would we have met? I mean, think about it. We've met some real cool people, and we've had, like, uh, a lot of great moments through the show. Did you even envision anything like this? When I first started it, no, but once we saw, like I said, you know, that was the big thing that kind of got things going very quickly was we got a lot of traffic really quickly. You right. Know, like, we had been talking about launching a website or doing it. and You, you know, probably thought you were going to add a few writers, but you think you'd have a staff of 10? I I honestly thought. And more with the videographers and the frequent contributors. Like I, I honestly thought going into it, like, it'd be a really fun part-time job if I had a couple, you know, buddies or, or people I know. Uh, contributing to it, I, I always consider it be something I did in my spare time, and then it just it t- it took off really quickly, and and you know realized there was a good opportunity there to turn it into something more. Um, so yeah, I mean when I uh, first started thinking of doing a you know an MMA blog, um, you know I, I didn't think too much of it. You know I mean y- you you want it to be successful and get some traffic and stuff, but within a week it was like okay this is gonna be something a little bigger than you know we kind of realized and. Um, but, you know, was lucky to kind of ready to, to pounce on it and prepare for it. And, you know, I, opportunities like that one don't come along very often because, you know, MMA keeps getting bigger and bigger. But if you could pick one time to really get ahead of the curve, when would you pick? Like, you know, 2004, 5, 2006. And that's right. when we launched a website. Like, you know, you you could try to do it now. Paralleling that, that tough, basically. Yeah, and, and it wasn't the just that the sport was getting bigger. It was just total lack of like competition you know there were like two or three websites and you know like you know fox and espn and you know all these mainstream 
companies who eventually came around, like it was nowhere on their radar at that point. You know, there were a few kind of, I think like an NBC Sports and a, a few of them kind of were, were dabbling in it. But, you know, th- it's not very often like, you know, MMA is always going to be a, kind of a bit of a niche sport. But the fact that it's on national TV on multiple channels, you know, it, it's a big sport. And it's not very often that you can get in on basically the ground floor of a of, of a major sport mm-hmm. and, and one that becomes a major sport within 10 years, you know. So I think we all got very lucky to be where we were at when we were with the people we were with because, I mean, we've seen it with other websites, not just in an MMA and other media outlets. Like, you can get the most talented people in the world together, um, you know, the most loyal readers and, and listeners and stuff. But, you know, it, once you put them all in a room together, things can go south very, very quickly. And I think we've lucked out that we all work with people that we really like and the, the readers and listeners that – you know, I've kind of become that hardcore audience. All seem like very cool people and people yeah. we like to hang out with. So we got lucky. You know, uh, can we ever talk about some ideas that I wouldn't say no. failed, but that actually had a little bit of traction and it just never came to be? And if so, more specifically, just to give everybody an idea of just how many things we've talked about or considered. or Can we ever talk about that cruise that almost happened? You remember that about five, six years ago? I remember when, like, 10 years ago, like, the first year of where it would have been, like, fighters on the cruise. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it's funny because, like, I've seen that. Bu- we've been Did pitched, you ever hear that? Yeah. Okay. We've been pitched that business model or that business idea, like, 30 times in the past. Oh, really? And it's oh, okay. it's a very popular because there's so much money to be made on, you know, selling vacations to people. And, right. You know, like, of course it would make sense that people would want to do that for us because we're the ones who get everyone to buy expensive you know cruise tickets and stuff and i don't know like back then it made no sense because it was like well does the ship even have internet and it was like well no it's like well i can't have like our minimal staff on a cruise for a week with no internet access as we're trying to get a website off the ground you know but so. things have changed now right where yeah, internet I mean, access is more possible yeah I, I think you know you could get internet and stuff like i i don't know if i want to be stuck on a cruise with people you yeah. know like uh, I mean, even like my best friends in the world, like I would be like, dude, we we can't do a cruise because we're going to be ready to kill each other after three days. And what do you do that? Like, mm-hmm. it's either you put up with them or get in a fist fight or you jump overboard. And those don't seem like really <laughs> great options, you know, at least if you're in Vegas and stuff, you can go to another casino or something or, or well, something maybe like there's that, a, maybe there's a three day. Could you stand three days? I'm not a cruise guy. At really? All. Like, it's like if I'm going to go on vacation. Been. Me neither. But I was thinking. Let's say there was an event in uh, somewhere in South Florida, and it tied into, or maybe we tied it into a, a junkie gathering or something. And Dan, you can stay back. You can quarterback it from, from uh, you know, some hotel in, in South Florida and stay off the cruise. But what if we did a couple shows on the cruise and just had some fighters, maybe a couple ring card girls, junkie nation, be fun times, right? What, what they have everything you need there. They have flip flop. Com- they have comedy shows. Girls, maybe a couple fighters. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have, they have comedy. They have uh, comedy shows. They have concerts. Uh, concerts. They have nightclubs. I tried to do so. The, they uh, have the stuff to do there. So That's you're awesome. talking about a crappier version of Las Vegas. <laughs> well, just to shake things up a little, I guess. Uh, that's all. As long as no plus one shows, you, yeah. Plus, you could drown. So yeah, there's yay. that. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, that's not very likely though. That that um. I, I've seen. I mean, have th- you seen our audience? Like, you don't think some of them are going to get tanked enough that there yeah. there's a legit chance of someone falling over? We'll have them. another oh, Christopher oh, Walken, Natalie Wood. <laughs> <laughs> there's yeah. there's yeah. people mowing down people on the strip. So <laughs> this is like the beginning of a setup of like a Dateline yeah. special. Like, yeah. what happened that <laughs> night on the cruise? <laughs> was it an accident or something more? Or <laughs> someone yeah. just goes. Hey, where, where's Joe from H Town? Who pushed him over? Yeah. All right. Um, let's go to the phone lines. Mike from New Jersey. <laughs> What's up, Mike? Sorry, man. You know what? You're a great leadoff hitter, but but we had to shake things up. You know, we have a, a, a lefty on the mound, so we let off with Proteus. So let's see what you can do uh, here batting second. Nah, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, I just had a quick question for you guys. I, I watched um, a couple weeks ago. I watched UFC tonight, and they did this, uh, this cool little bit where they um, they call it path to the title, and they throw a fighter's name out, and then they throw you know two or three guys out um, who they would have to fight and, and beat to get to the title. I love it. And uh, mm. yeah, it, it was pretty cool. And um, I just want to throw two guys out there that I think are interesting names and uh, see what you guys have to say about their path to the title. All right. Um, 
Johnny Johnny Hendricks and uh, Jimmy Rivera. You want their path to the title, right? Yep. Johnny Hendricks at 185. All right. First, he's got Tim Boach ahead of him. And that's two guys coming off a loss. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, okay, he has to get past Tim Boach. And then after that, Jacare and Whitaker are fighting. So someone's getting eliminated there. And Romero's waiting for the winner of GSP and Bisping, right? I imagine. I don't think he's going to take another fight. Brunson just fight up, signed on to fight Daniel Kelly. So yeah. I will say maybe the winner of Brunson and Kelly because now we're saying Johnny would be coming off a win. Uh, so that Bo or Bosch. maybe a Sam Alvey type. Bosch, mm -hmm. then the Kelly Brunson winner. Yeah, so we'll, we'll give him a quicker like path. That. The winner of Kelly and Brunson. Uh, and then if he gets past that, then – I think the By rest then, of the division is going to shake out. Well, GSP and Bisping has taken so long that now you have the winner of Musasi and Weidman. I think All that's right. too soon. I think the winner of Jock Ray's Whitaker's too soon. Maybe by then, Rockhold's ready to return. But, wow, 6'3 guy against a 5'10 guy. That's the, that's the point where it's like, are you sure you want to still do this, uh, Johnny Hendricks? Uh, Gastelum is a middleweight now. And if he gets past Anderson Silva, so now we're at that third fight before we even talk about a contender. And if he beats a contender and hopefully he looks good, then God, I think he's five fights away, man. Well, if I'm if I'm Johnny Hendricks' manager, I'm thinking I want you know, uh, you know, not so much money fights. I hate that word, but like uh, fights that's going to garner attention. And I want to avoid the six three guys because I think Johnny's way right. too short for that. So what, what what you do is you go off narrative. You don't want to go off you know skill for skill, pound for pound, especially when the rankings aren't meaning what they should. So I say avoid all those guys. I say angle for your rematch for Gaslam because you want you want another guy who's a welterweight who's undersized in that division. Right. There's a narrative there um, where Johnny had a poor performance, and you know even though he had a poor performance, he didn't get blown out of the water. His chin held up. He had his moments. Whitaker's uh, also a welterweight. Angle, he, he, Either that or Whitaker, and then from there, use that to say, okay, I'm going to continue this rematch tour after I beat Gaslam, and I'm going to get that rematch with GSP. And whether GSP is a champion or even if he's not a champion, that's one of those fights that can get you into that title picture. And then the other guy was, I believe, was Jimmy Rivera. I think they're trying to – the UFC move, from, from what it sounds like, is they're trying to put him with Marlon Moraes, which sounds like a very like UFC move for a guy like Jimmy Rivera. Mm -hmm. But if I was Jimmy Rivera's manager, I would be, again, I would be going for a big name. I want to make a, make a big impact, a big splash, even though Cruz – that would be the last fight Dominic Cruz would want. Mm -hmm. Dominic Cruz would be the first person on my list um, if I'm you know Jimmy Rivera's manager. I'm sorry, guys, but the road to a title for Johnny Hendricks mm -hmm. goes through the 170 division. He's going to run into somebody that's a lot bigger at middleweight, mm -hmm. and he's going to realize that he's going to go, I never want to do that again. Dieting well, that's is much how, better than That's this. what I had thought when I said we're looking at maybe five fights away. Too many things is it to better happen. for him to go, I did well at middleweight, but you know what? But he, he clearly – I saw a story recently over the weekend – that said, I'm never going back to 170. Oh, and because he's now approaching mid-30s, I just don't know, man. I, I don't know. But that might be the quicker path because of the GSP angle. If he winds up dropping, maybe it's a one and done for him at we 85. Spent all day yesterday talking about weight cutting, weight cutting. not forcing <laughs> these guys to do it. First thing George does the next day. Wait, wait, he said it. He started it. He started it. Uh, good stuff, Jersey Mike. Do you have anything to share on Rivera? Rivera is rumored to fight Mar Mar uh, Marias, right? Uh, it's the one they're rumored to try to put put together right, right. now. And if he does, with the Faber win and the Marias win, I mean, he's right there. So I would say he either picks a fight with Cruz, and it looks like Cruz is just waiting for the winner of the other two, or he may have to take one more fight. So it sounds like he's two fights away. Maybe. That road could Jimmy be pretty Rivera. nasty for him. Yeah, because that, that little triangle of TJ, Garbrandt, and uh, Cruz, they're in that uh, – they're so popular – Yep. And those fights are so good that that's where I think WME, IMG will say, how about a rematch somewhere along the line if you have some barn burner type fights. So I think Rivera's best bet is to stay busy. Yeah, and Rivera's a weird case too because he's super underrated. I'm a big fan of him. I'm a big fan of Marlon Marais, who's also very underrated. But the problem is I think that fight does less for both guys, whereas I think you could even bring in a wild card like John Lineker to fight Jimmy Rivera. And I would argue that a John Lineker fight, even with his standing, would do more for Jimmy Rivera than a guy like Marlon Marais. It doesn't make sense. not how it should be, but we're but seeing how things are going. That's, that's what you got to look for. You yeah, know? and in the case of any of these guys, chirp a little, and you may get Johnny four fights instead of five, maybe Jimmy one fight instead yeah. of two. If you just pipe up a little and, and sell your fights, sell yourself, you know, get people interested, you know, start to create a little bit of buzz around your own career. Yep. Great stuff, Mike. That was a great, great call, call, man. See you guys later.
All right. There's two men on base right now, right? There is, man. That was he. He actually he hit a triple. Hit a I think he hit a triple, and uh, Proteus scored. So all we need is Muna to hit a sack fly. What's up, Muna? How you doing? Hey, morning, gentlemen. How's it going? Good, and you? Good. I'm glad we got the double D's in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> Dan squared. Yeah. Uh, anyways, first off, anytime Dan's in the studio, I've just got to thank him for uh, starting up uh, UFC Junkie, which uh, is now our MMA junkie. So I uh, want to thank him for his hard work. And because of him, you know, it's led to the community that we have now. And that's why we've got the gathering coming up in a uh, month and a half. So just want to thank the man. Awesome. I appreciate it. In I fact, I, I hate taking credit for you guys building your your audience but i will so thank you <laughs> in fact you know what i i did want to ask you that when you um when you went from ufc junkie to mma junkie was it a like uh you know, did you get yelled at what, what type of call was that was it just one of those like excuse me you know you need to change because of this or was it somebody actually being pissed off no i mean we had started trying to get that domain basically from day one mm -hmm. um and we mma knew junkie yeah. Okay. Like we had UFC Junkie and started on that. I think within a week or two, it was like, okay, let, let's try to get MMA Junkie. And that was part of it. We didn't have, you know, I, I just didn't really expect it to take off. So I, I didn't think far enough ahead to, to need MMA Junkie. Um, but that was a bit of a problem. I mean, we knew the clock was ticking. We knew eventually probably UFC would say something. And, and they had kind of, you know, hinted at that. And I think legally we we would have had a case, but I don't want to put my, you know, friend's uh, wife's lawyer on it against the UFC legal team. I mm -hmm. don't think that would have been much of a fair fight. Um, so, no, I mean, it, it wasn't anything too difficult. I mean, we were moving in that direction. We had a, a lot of issues buying that domain from someone. I, I won't go into MMA that. Junkie. Yeah. Really? Because someone was sitting on it. and Why can't we talk about it it's 10 years later? Because. Was it a lot of money? They, or they owned a few different MMA domains. Oh, and we just told them that we were interested in one of them that they had. Um, we didn't tell them we specifically need MMA Junkie and just kind of let them lead us to MMA Junkie. Mm -hmm. And then once he realized who had bought it, UFC Junkie, if, if I'm remembering this correctly, uh, one of the other guys handled most of the negotiations. But after the fact, he realized, oh, I could have squeezed them for a lot more money because right. they wanted this specific <laughs> one. And then there were some threats. And, and oh, yeah, so, ugly. Um, so Recap. We, yeah, we, we would have switched <laughs> over to MMA Junkie a lot sooner, but mm -hmm. we were dealing with that, that whole situation. And as we're dealing with that guy and the threats and things like that, then the UFC starts speaking up. It was like, well, whether you think you have a right or not, you know, we, we're, we're going to fight it. So you wow. may want to switch over. So. I wonder if it was the same kid that took Josh Thompson's Twitter. What nah, I probably head? not. I, I, I have awesome. an idea, and I'm going to ask Dan during the commercial. But because um, I know someone that's bought a lot of them, and he's very open about it, but he's not the threatening type, so I have a feeling it's probably not him. But uh, interesting. Like honestly, if I listen to today's show, that story alone, like I, it's pretty cool. Pretty yeah. cool to hear. And, and uh, I've never heard that before. Me neither. Yeah. Sorry, Moon, to hijack your call. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's okay. All right. Uh, two part question since we got Dan in the studio. Uh, it's about UFC creating stars. And one of them is uh, first question is since you see all the views in terms of, you know, which fighters get the most uh, page views, is there any fighter that would surprise us with the amount of traffic uh, that they get? And it's probably a bigger star than what we assume. And uh, the second question is. Uh, you know, we've got a problem with, you know, the UFC making stars. And I think the formula is there. I mean, uh, you don't have to be a Conor. You don't have to be a Ronda. But uh, have some sort of personality or, you know, make us care about um, you as a fighter. So I don't know if there's any insight on what can be done because, you know, aside from Conor and a couple of other guys, really no one's selling pay-per-views. So just want to get your thoughts on that, and I can take it off the air. See you, Muna. I mean, right now, right, it's, thanks, yes. it's Ronda and McGregor and then everybody else. And, and I say that because the the gap between those two and everyone else, like on an average story, is massive. Uh, one, one of the few that can kind of bridge that gap is uh, Diaz, regardless of which Diaz. Um, occasionally Misha Tate, but with Diaz and Misha – and a, a few of the other uh, fighters who can kind of get to the McGregor Rousey levels, it's always because they're talking and giving us something interesting. Like, you can be the biggest star and the biggest fan favorite, but if we're not doing uh, stories that have kind of 
interesting headlines because we hit on an interesting topic. No one's going to just get traffic because of who they are. Like, I don't think – maybe Ronda, maybe McGregor, but no one else is even uh, close to that. The ones – you know, some of the surprising ones, um, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of too many, but – I mean, it's anyone who talks a lot. Like a Kevin Lee will a lot of times get a lot of traffic on his stuff because he doesn't hold back in his interviews, plus he does the radio show pretty often. Yeah. Um, so guys like and, – and, you know, I think that just it, – it goes back to the fact that, you know, uh, Tito Ortiz, uh, Chael, Vonderlay, kind of the Bellator legends, um, Tor, a lot of them show up in our traffic reports pretty high, but it's because they, they all talk a big game. Um, they say interesting things. They have interesting call outs. So, I mean, if you're kind of a, a mid level or lower level fighter, I mean, the best way to gain traction and get attention and build an audience is being willing to talk openly. And that doesn't mean just, you know, crapping on opponents and, and you know, name calling and, and stuff like that. But, you know, if you want to fight, say you want that fight. If you think there's something wrong with the sport, say there's something wrong with the sport. Like, if someone came out right now. I think even a low-level UFC fighter, mid-level Bellator guy, really came out and indicted like the the state of weight cutting in MMA. Like a story like that's going to gain a lot of traction because a lot of people feel that way, mm-hmm. but not a lot of fighters are willing to just you know speak out like that. And I don't I don't think it's necessarily because they're scared to or they don't want the repercussions. I think a lot of them just think, well, no one really cares what I think. But you know, if you're a fighter, people care about your opinion. So. Be opinionated. That, that's the best way to get traction with our audience. Mm-hmm. All right. We're going to take this break. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Rush 93. Just a uh, couple quick minutes, and we'll be right back.
walls have changed a lot too, where it's easy to suit again. <laughs> They can drink Mentos flavored Diet Coke without their stomachs giving a single fuck. They are gorgeous George and Goes. And this is MMA Junkie Radio. All right, we're back. This song. James yeah, Brown. Right. What's it called, though? What's the song called? It's James Brown. I thought he was going to do Get On Up. Get On Up? Is that where this well, is? No, we're not at this? G already. Aren't we going A through G? No. So one week we do A, then everything's A. Then oh, the next week is B, oh, I see. Got it. Then, so this week happens to be G. Gotcha. Just right. give it up and turn it loose. Give it up. All right. Uh, we got Dan Tom and Dan Stupp here in studio with us. And I'm going back, just like I said, to look at some of the questions that are out there. We have uh, a gentleman on the Facebook page named Marcus who says, what do you guys think of Team MMA? It's been tried a few times. And the IFL, you know, a few years ago did it. Kind of went away. Oh, Does uh, he mean like tag I, team or like? Yeah, I thought he was talking like hip show type. Oh, okay. Well, let's. What do you think of the hip show? Did you like two on two MMA? Not really. Me neither. Because no. the minute one guy, uh, the only way it could be epic is if when they're fighting, two guys, one guy knocks his guy out, and then it's two on one, and the one guy somehow beats the other two up. You'd probably go, "Wow, that was something else." But for the most part, I mean, you know, now they're getting smashed. Uh, at that point, I'd rather see just ten on ten in a room. Mm -hmm. You know, some bar fight or whatever than, I mean, than that I, I i tried it i actually sat through access tv andrew simon pro promoted it on our show i sat there i watched it i tried i just didn't think it was the closest thing that i think we've done is maybe like what the uh ultimate fighter did with american top team versus the black zillions mm -hmm. i like that angle for shows yeah. like that but as far as uh like a whole season like, like alpha that, male oh, versus uh nova and would have been cool right yeah because cool. they're both specialists in some of the lighter weight classes so they need to do that, but, like, do the team versus team, yeah. but anything but MMA. Like, I would watch a season of them, like, Team Alpha Male versus American Top Team, like, in a season-long dodgeball tournament <laughs> or something. Or, or how about <laughs> different sports? Yeah, like. Like an eight-week show, and each week, you know, it's four-on-four four in bowling, or it's six-on-six six beach volleyball, you know, something like that. That'd that was well, a, that used to be a fun. Why? Because you have to wear a shirt. <laughs> as long as you got the shoes on, you you may be able to get away <laughs> with it. But flops. Of course, then they're going to be sweating all over the the lanes and warping the wood. <laughs> and, but uh, no, but it, it, it's funny you mentioned that. That well, going back to the tag team yeah. stuff, uh, John McCarthy got into it with uh, I forget the guy's name. Who is it? Casey something? Cyrus Fees? Yeah, I, th I think. Oh, was, so. I know. Uh, oh, Casey Oxidine. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I I think like. He's one of the kind of promoters of it or something. And yeah. he and McCarthy kind of got in an argument. I mean, it wasn't like name call. Back in the day or recent? Just like in the past week or two. So if you go on their Twitter timelines. But, like, John McCarthy is not a big fan of the, the tag team stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think it was Casey trying to explain, you know, like, you know, different tastes for different people. And it was actually kind of an interesting argument. I mean, I'm kind of uh, – I don't like seeing it. I, I think it's kind of goofy. Um, and possibly dangerous, but it, it's like when you're playing poker and like twos are wild and sevens are wild and let's put some extra jokers in there. It's like, yeah. okay, well, it's not really poker anymore, you mm -hmm. know? So, yeah, I think we're past the age where like we, we could have maybe got away with that. Like I'm, I guess I'm more, more, more on Dan's side as far as like all or nothing. Like I, I'd rather to have it like some type of competition or just if we're going to do team, you know, take the MMA aspect out of it. But what I will say is as a fan of, you know, um, Pancrase, and although my pro wrestling fandom was really small in the, you know, in the early 90s, uh, or the golden era, even the, the you know, WWF, um, I did like that tag team aspect, I do like kind of the narratives and, and stuff there, and I always wondered, I'm like, what if they ever, because it got foggy with Pancrase when you look back in the day about, you know, grabbing a rope and, you know, having those pro wrestling rules, with, you know, that would allow you to get out of a submission, it's like, what if they could incorporate, you know, th you know, you, you had to fast forward back to the 90s to try to do this in Japan, but you incorporate that Japanese pro wrestling, and, 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 and uh, you know, kind of grabbing the ropes or tagging a partner in and in with MMA. I thought there could have maybe been a happy medium, but that would have been for a specific audience, maybe just for a small minority of our history. But 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 today, I I, I think it's 
I think it's unsafe and does probably more harm than good, in my opinion. It does. That, that's just my opinion. Because I'm picturing Congo and Pat Barry. And, <laughs> oh, my uh, gosh. So Pat Barry is just <laughs> walloping Congo, right? Mm-hmm. And what if Congo somehow just happens to tag? You know, and Pat, if I'm not mistaken, Congo hurt Barry, then Barry came back on Congo, then Congo finished it. But as that happens, if you're Pat Barry and let's say Congo tagged in Kane, you know, at that point, Pat Barry would be like, ah, shit, like, you know, he may, he even though he's, for some exciting even moments, though he's, yeah. you know, like on the verge of knocking out Congo, he's got a fresh cane coming at him. I uh, wonder if he runs back and tags Junior to Santos, but like you mentioned, the rear naked now you're talking about over there. two concussed fighters that yeah. are on the sideline, and do you have, uh, you know, do you have the ethics to send them both back in or or, or what happens? Yeah. You know, like are they getting looked at at that <laughs> point? I mean, you're, you're, you know, holding up the numbers, five, you know. So I think you just want to finish what you started. Yeah. You're going to get scenarios, too, where you're paying to see these four guys, right? And they not they may not all get in the cage at, at one point, right? The first guy might finish. The other guy, in 10 seconds, the match is over. <laughs> yeah. You never yeah. got to see Kane come out, or you never see him match <laughs> Can up. Can you imagine anyone? how pissed the other two would be? Yeah. Even if you won, you'd be like, oh, fuck, I want to still want to fight. But now I guess granted, you, they could fight well, again like a well, month later. No, or actually, they maybe? could fight right then and there, a singles match. I don't know. That's a lot. But, yeah, I mean. This, They're this technically ready and warmed up, right? They're technically ready and warmed up. I mean, yeah, huh. it would never happen. But I mean, these are just fun. And how about like, how yeah. interesting would it be if one guy came out, knocked him out, and then the other guy comes and he takes him out too? You know, I don't. There's so many scenarios <laughs> my mind's gonna blow up Somebody right now. Somebody buy uh, tagteamjunkie.com. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to uh, Marco from Waco. What's up, Marco? Marco from Waco. What que pasa, Jebronis? ¿Cómo estás? I got the I got the perfect solution. Instead of tag team, let's do a battle royale. Just put the whole division on one cage, <laughs> and the last guy, last guy standing wins. That that, would that'd be, be a really quick way to get some clarity in each. A number one class. contender, <laughs> yeah. a number one contender. That does there would it right be there. no doubt about who the champion is. Who so. wins? Who? Uh, tell me <laughs> playfully, who wins a 155 pound battle royal? Oh shit! Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you who wins. Because he'll toss everybody off the of the of the top row with Okay. Sticks. But as you say that, won't I would go? Won't with Benny Darius and Rafael dos Anjos go? Hey, let's get Khabib out of here. I'm gonna go with Tony Ferguson. <laughs> Tony Ferguson? Yeah, because you're right. Once Khabib grabs a hold of someone, other guys are gonna start stealing on him, right? Right. Uh, Tony seems like a guy that could be fighting people off, elbowing here, throwing a punch here, kick, get off me, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. He's gangster. I would go with him. I'll tell you who would win if this was at 185, and not 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 the hijack or taking a different direction, but it'd be my man Dan Kelly. And that sounds like a joke, but he's one of the only fighters who, if you look at his record, I believe his very first fight has a TKO, and in parentheses he threw his opponent out of the ring. Oh, is wow. why he got that TKO. <laughs> so I'm going with uh, for for Dan Kelly to continue he's been his upset streak. His whole life for that. And uh, yeah, he's <laughs> <laughs> open weight though. Give me Masvidal. Masvidal seems like the guy that would reach into his trunks and boom, hit you with the brass knuckles. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Masvidal and Poirier team up, and they could dominate yeah, that be thing. Over. Yeah. Uh huh. Marco. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, Johnny Hendricks is gonna poke you in the eye because it's not coming out of a loss. He beat Hector Lombard on his 185 debut. So from my point of view, he only need three more fights to get to that title. But that's just me. Uh, last thing, dude. Uh, to Dan Tom, and he said, you know, it's cool to have this break in between USC events and whatever, you know, MMA. Well, what about the event this weekend? I is Rampage and Kimo, you know, shock liver. I actually kind of sort of want to see the fight, especially with Rampage saying that he kind of regrets getting into MMA. I mean, hey, that MMA made you a millionaire, Rampage. Come on, man. Quit complaining. We're going to let you guys catch you next time. See you, Marco. Well, when a guy talks about not wanting that he never should have done the sport, I mean, that's a surefire sign that he's motivated and ready to put on yeah. a great performance. And, mm-hmm. and Rampage has a, a track record of always showing up prepared and, and being committed 100% to the sport. So, no, I think it's going to be an ugly fight. And I, I think Law, King Mo. Who'd you pick? King Mo. King Mo. All right. Just Same because you, which, uh, you never know with Rampage. Like, the, uh, is he really going to show up prepared and mentally focused and ready? And I don't even think he has the right – like, even if when he has a chip on his shoulder and, and seems like, a, you know, kind of sour, at least then it's, you know, he's out to kind of prove something. But the the whole thing, I never should have done this. I just – I don't think he cares anymore. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM Rush 93. We're going to take a quick break, come back. We'll let you know what's happening in the second hour. We have a, a welterweight headed your way. Initials J.E. That's all. That's all I'm going to give away. And it's his birthday today. I'm just kidding. Jake Ellenberger will be our guest in the second hour, and we'll uh, 
take another call or two if we have some time. When we come back. We gotta get a his Royal Rumble. <laughs> what? Blah, blah, blah. Here are those two dummies, George and Goes. You know what? Let's sneak Brandon from Louisville in here in this first hour. He's a frequent caller, and he's been around for a long time, so I'm going to give him that. Because when we start the second hour, we'll be talking to Jake Ellenberger, UFC welterweight fighting Mike Perry at UFC 108 in April. I think it's the 22nd or something like that. It's that national card, goes. And uh, then after that, we'll take more calls. So let's do this one right quick. What's up, Brandon? How you doing? Hey, guys. I'm calling a little blind today. Uh, is Dan Sup still around? Hey, buddy. He is. Hey. How you doing? Uh, that's not Dan Sup. <laughs> Goes is imitating you. <laughs> yeah, he's here. He just threw on. He's his just throwing on the headphones now. It's Brandon from Louisville. Go ahead. He's right there. Hey, guys. Look, as we know, I'm a long-time junkie. Some might even say I'm the premier junkie. Those people owe me money, so I appreciate that. The first junkie I ever met was the OG Dan Stupp. I met Dan when the UFC came to Louisville that one time, uh, never to return. Um, and you know, Dan, he was busy, he was working. We took some time to talk, and you know that, that's one of the reasons why I've always had a, a love for this site, this, this show. Good. <laughs> I, uh, no, I, I remember that Louisville show. I remember that there. Was that Ellenberger and Diego? No, that was in Nebraska, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Okay, that was Diego and someone. Mark and Cammon. Diego and Cammon? I think yeah. so. It was a great fight wow. in Louisville. Whichever one it was, the main event was bloody, controversial. I think it was Cammon and, and uh, Diego. Yeah, they and still argue about that. It was that. right after the arena had just opened, and I, I think I talked about this recently, like the download speed, like the internet speeds. 
were the fastest it had ever been, like 100 megabytes down and, and consistent. But there was this lady, like, cage side, just screaming for, like, five straight hours, like, at the top of her lungs. Like, the most obnoxious, you know, when a male fans get really drunk and just start screaming out random stuff, this was a sober female day. And it was just so obnoxious. Like, I mean, it ruined the event for so many people because it was just nonstop. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, that, that's mainly what I remember. I wish they would go back there because that was a, a awesome arena. I think it's a good market too. So, Brandon, part of the reason I called, I, I was doing some research, and uh, with Kentucky has some issues with their commission, and uh, they've just changed the uh, rules. But actually, it, it didn't allow for live. Uh, Televised pro wrestling uh, in the May was stringent, uh, and they've recently changed that. Uh, the Yum Center is actually holding four dates for the UFC this year, so I'm hoping that's a sign of good things to come. Um, the bigger spectrum of my question. Oh my God! Today. All right, listen. Uh, <laughs> you must not have heard why I said we're going to squeeze you in. So just hang tight with us. I will find some time with you before we start the second hour. Hang with us there, Brandon. I heard a siren, dishes breaking, <laughs> but it's Brandon, so I'll give him some respect. Just hang tight. Uh, this is the end of the first hour on the MMA Junkie Radio Show. We're going to pay some bills, do a sports update, and we'll be right back.
be a cop, right. and then he had a lot of troubles. And I can't remember if it was drug related or if he mm. beat someone up. Girls. Yeah. yeah. I think he beat up. A girl. I had that guy in my car. I picked him up and his manager. I feel like Sylvester Stallone's boxing show is about to begin. This is the song that plays when I walk into the right now. Is it? Yeah. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio. It's the second hour here. We got Dan Tom, the uh, fight and the MMA analyst, but he's a fight analyst and he trains out of Extreme Couture, good friend of the show, and of course Dan Stupp, co-founder of MMA Junkie, as well as our current editor in chief. That's the theme for Game of Thrones, George. Is it? Yeah. Gotcha. Let's talk to Brandon in Louisville again. We'll finish up his calls. What's up, Brandon? I know you had uh, seven or eight more points to make. I did. Don't ever cut me off like that again. <laughs> so, Goz, you said that song. Goz, you said that song plays every time you go into the the Rhino. No, I didn't say that. Is that because you're a short guy looking for the company of whores? But <laughs> what? Oh, actually, that is pretty funny. Good job. That's a, if you guys watch Game of Thrones, it's yes. a really good bag right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so back to where I was at, Dan, Midwest MMA, what happened? Why did it fall off? The UFC goes to Cincinnati or to Ohio once every three years, it looks like Tennessee, which isn't really Midwest, but still in the region, once every couple of years, Indianapolis once every few years, uh, Chicago seems to be the only mainstay. Is it just lack of stars from that area or it, it, what do you think? It was so disappointing, like, you know, and, and that was when the Louisville event was going on. Like, we were getting Cincinnati and Columbus, Indianapolis, St. Louis. Like, it really looked like it was going to be Columbus coming. was a yearly stop. Yeah, part of the Arnold uh, Sports Festival. And I, I remember back then, and, and the WEC especially was paying attention to this, that um, some of their biggest TV markets were all Midwest, um, you know, uh, what was it? Uh, that, that, that's why it was surprising it took so long for them to get to Cleveland because we kept hearing mm. Cleveland consistently. Was one Cleveland of brought it. Were you there? Yeah. I heard yeah. it was loud. And that was the first one I went to in a, 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 quite a while. And, no, that that was a great uh, great event and a lot of fun. But, yeah, no, it was. I, I don't know if it was a matter. I mean, it, it seems like the events drew fairly well, but maybe they just couldn't get, um, you know, uh, ticket prices over a certain threshold to really make it worth it. But, yeah, it was disappointing. I thought for sure this was going to be a Midwest sport where we, we devoted, uh, you know, a big chunk of the event schedule to these Midwest markets, you know, these wrestling towns, you know, where kids grow up uh, wrestling and playing football and blue-collar stuff. And, you know, it seemed like we were on that way with Columbus and Cincinnati and Louisville and, and, and these markets. But, man, it just it dried up, and it seems like we went right back to Vegas and East Coast and West Coast. So. I mean, why else would we hire Matt Erickson, right? Yeah, I mean <laughs> – <laughs> Uh, Brandon, where exactly yes, are you uh, making this call from? Just curious. Uh, right now, I'm in a tractor trailer full of uh, recycled material. I've got to unload. Uh, oh. I, I get a lot of noise. You know, I'm dropping pallets, forklifts running around. I see. All right. All right, buddy. Well, thank you so much for the call. Later, guys. All right. Cool. We'll see it. You ever driven a forklift before? I have. I've always wanted to. But uh, I feel like I'd mess that up. I'll tell you a story. Uh, my buddy, Big Hector, and I used to work at the State Farm. Uh, it was called the Regional Center. We worked in administrative services. And so there was shipping and receiving and printing and the mail room, whatever. It was one of my first jobs. And we had, I knew how to drive a forklift, but we also had these deals where you drove them. You stood in them and you drove them. And the forks were in the back. And mm -hmm. So what you would do is you just back up to pick up whatever pallet uh, you needed to get. Well, on one of those, we were just goofing off. It was just before lunch. And Big Hector had gone on this, like, uh, he had started lifting weights. And he was like, look at these guns and, you know, or whatever. And, and on one of those, I had gone up a little bit because not always were you picking up a pallet. You could actually just grab, like, pens or paper or sticky notes because a lot of the – 
uh, agents, a lot of a lot of you that have State Farm agents, if you ever been to their office, all those um, supplies that they have, well, we send it to them, right? So rather than them go to Staples and Office Depot, they ordered it through us, and then of course we, on a bigger scale, probably had these contracts with all these companies. So anyway, um, on one of those, I happened to go up about, I guess, seven feet. And so Big Hector goes, hey, gee, we're getting ready to go to lunch. And I go, yeah, yeah, let me just finish up this order, you know. And he goes, all right. And so as I'm doing something, I have my pen and a clipboard out. So I think he just thought, oh, he'll be here for a second. And he reaches up and starts doing pull-ups, right. And he goes, oh, just get a set in, you know. And so I looked and I go, oh, yeah, here we go. And I push the button to raise it. So I raised it. And he goes, hey, whoa, 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 you know, and I think it raised so quick that if he was smart, he should have just let go, and it really wouldn't have been that big of a drop. But instead, he was so startled, he hung on. And so I, <laughs> I saw him kind of freaking out, and I go, you want to go back down? He goes, yeah, and I, go, I hit the up button. I go, oh, I went the wrong way. He goes, whoa! <laughs> now he's really scared because he couldn't look down, you know? And it's funny because the other guys are laughing their asses off, but he's going, gee, my fucking arms are burning. Like, bring it down already. But I think he's thinking he's hanging on for dear life. And I go, let's go a little higher. So he went a little higher. And each time, it's kind of like it's a jolting motion. It's smooth once you hit the button. But when you first hit it, it's a jolting motion. So we got up there, and I go, oh, shit, I got better. It is cement we're over. I better bring him down. So I brought him down. <laughs> His arms were burning. And since we always crack jokes, it wasn't as big of a deal. He was mad, but he got over it. But then one of my buddies goes, he goes, let me show you where you had him, you know. He goes, I'm going to go and get up, and you watch. And it was about a good, it'd be like a, the second story of a house. Wow. What? Like he was that high. You <laughs> raised him that high? I didn't realize that we went that far. I thought it was about a story. He goes, no. He goes, look, you were here. Don't you remember? Holy and shit. Like, there was no phones. Uh, you know, we didn't have cameras in our phones because this was late 80s, early 90s. <laughs> but it was that oh high. So yeah. had he let go, like he could have had a broken leg. and Or who knows? That's if he goes straight down. If he falls, it could have been bad. So we, we laughed that it was. It didn't turn out to be like that. But the that irony of an insurance company. I don't this know. is what's going. On. <laughs> yeah, I I was actually I was never that bad. I was actually certified to uh, to run a forklift. I was a site supervisor of a job, so th they would have us run the yard. So the site supervisor had to be forklift certified. But I would of course use my powers responsibly. So they're scrapping, and it was attached to one of those Diamondback uh, cat um, forklifts, like the big ones, right? Mm -hmm. And I would le leave the scrap box set right above the porta potties. So whenever my guys would go in for lunch break, I would just lower it down and just shut it, and it, would, it would close perfectly to where it seals them in with the door. Like, hey, let me out of here, let me out. <laughs> <laughs> and we would get a good laugh, and we would, we would just see how many people we could trap a week, and that, that's that's the extent of it. But yeah, I, 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 I didn't threaten anybody's life. Like if you had that guy up that high, I would have been asking him questions like, hey, remember that oh, question man. I asked you? Let me ask that again. Oh, dude, yeah, looking back. I'll I was like, ah, that was a close call. All right. So we've got to get to our guest here. He's ready to go. He'll be fighting on, damn it, I looked it up. It's April 22nd, I believe. Somebody correct me here if they have it handy. But it's UFC Fight Night 108. It's in Nashville, April Tennessee. 22nd. Hey, yeah, April 22nd. Uh, and he's fighting Mike Perry. His name is Jake Ellenberger. What's up, Jake? How you doing, brother? I'm good, man. How about you guys? Doing great. You're on again with George and Goes. We also have Dan Tom and Dan Stubb here with us. Uh, before we get going, happy birthday, brother. Thanks, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Any big plans for your birthday? <laughs> uh, just training, man. Just just getting getting pushed. Like, probably the most uncomfortable birthday I could have, but it's uh, it's all good. We'll, we'll celebrate after the 22nd. Will the guys let up a little bit just because it is your birthday, or will they, will they take it to you even harder because it is your birthday? You would think, but it's actually the opposite. So they'll push you even harder and, 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 and ask you if you're going to quit on your birthday. And, of course, the answer is always no. Tell me, on any day is a no, but. <laughs> tell me the name of a guy at that King's MMA gym or any of the gyms that you frequent where you just go, oh, man, it's this guy. Like, is there just someone that goes a little harder? And he's not doesn't make him a bad guy, but you just know this guy's intense. Uh, you could name, you could, I mean, <laughs> you could name half of the gym there, but. Uh, I think Jake may yeah, be that some guy. Yeah, really, there's some really. <laughs> are you that guy, Jake? Yeah, are you <laughs> the bully? <laughs> he can't name him. It's him, right? Yeah, it could be, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been told that, but I mean, I, I'm not I'm not a, a gym bully either. I'm not going to try to hurt anybody, you know. I'll mm -hmm. definitely push him, keep it intense, keep it real. But, yeah, there's a few guys that are, um, you know, Giga Chikansi, he's a glory kickboxing fighter. He's He's a... 
he's a tough round for anybody. But uh, yeah, there, there's a, there's a handful of those guys that you're not looking forward to. Mm-hmm. Hey, so listen, we we want to have a little bit of fun here because it is your birthday, and it's been a while since we had you on the I like on, fun. on the show. You know, earlier we were talking about a caller had talked about uh, tag team MMA, and so we just started goofing off. But we, st- we we one of the things we said was, uh, you know what a a Royal Rumble is? Wait, no, no, is it a Royal Rumble? Goes uh, Battle Royal. Oh, Battle Royal. Battle you know what a Battle Royal is, right? In pro wrestling. Yeah, we are. All right, so if they had a Battle Royal. Of just welterweights, you're all inside of uh, a ring. We'll say because it's yeah. it's a little easier than tossing someone out of a cage. Who do you think, other yeah. than you, of course, would do well and and possibly win this battle royal of just welterweights, uh, UFC welterweights? Battle royal. Hmm. That's a that's a good one. What's the strategy? <laughs> yeah, and do you have have you already started thinking of a strategy of how you would tackle this? I have. I mean, it, you know, it, it's kind of like a poker game. You know, it's number one is survival. You got to survive. Uh, and I talk about like more so a tournament kind of a poker, but it, it's the same strategy in the fight. Number one is always survival. Second is strategy. How are we gonna? Now, how are we gonna take out you know each guy one by one? But. Um, and, and being kind of being mistake free and, and uh, you know letting guys eventually are going to make a mistake, but uh, there's a I would assume it would be somebody like a wrestler who can just grind, who's super mentally tough. Um, but that's a that's a fun question. I mean, there's a handful of guys, yeah, that I think would do really well. All right, I'll throw out some names. Uh, you tell me if you think they're going to go out early or if they're going to be in there at the very end. All right. Okay. Donald Cerrone. I gotta imagine he's in there till the end. Damian Maya. I don't think he. I don't think he lasts really long. To be honest, I think people might. Uh, he might be the first to get. Uh, you know, the uh, first to get attacked. Mm. But I, I don't see him lasting to the end now. Matt Brown. Oh yeah, he's till the end. <laughs> <laughs> Robbie Lawler. Yeah. Yeah, Robbie's he's staying there. He's not going nowhere. Your buddy Patrick Cote. Uh, I think he'd do okay. Yeah. He'd probably be at somewhere in the middle. All right. Carlos Conde. Uh, yeah, I would say I would say Um He's a pretty intelligent fighter. I would say he'd last a while. Don I, I think that like the Matt Brown and the Lull, Robbie Lawler are the other guys at the end. Dong Hyun Kim. First. First guy out. He's first guy out. Okay. <laughs> you know, I was just about to say, it seems like everyone's staying until the end. You're being too nice here. Someone's got to go out, but there he goes. Dong Hyun Kim is the first guy out. And why is that? Uh, he, 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 see, <laughs> he, he seems a little bit, uh, a little reckless, a little, a little out of control, but, uh, I, I just don't see him having the, the fortitude of the, or the, or the skills to to be in the end till the end. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you a, yeah. a couple more, and then we can quit here, uh, unless the guys want to add to it. George Masvidal. I can see him staying there. Yeah, he's he's a he's a tough cat, and he's he doesn't he doesn't he stays out of danger pretty well. Does everyone pile on Tyron Woodley and get him out there early? You know, because he is the champ, so he's got that proverbial target. I I got to imagine. I got I got to think he'd be. He'd be definitely attacked early. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, how about you guys? Do you guys have anything to add to uh, that topic before we move on? Well, there's always these little alliances that are created in a battle royal. Yeah. Well, my question is, who do you think would be the first guy to double cross someone? Who's that, guy? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that okay. double cross gene in there? <laughs> That's a good question, that guys. Cool. Like, That's a, like the snake, the guy you can't trust. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I'm going to say, I think Masvidal's I got mean, a little I bit of that quality. <laughs> yeah. I think Masvidal could turn on someone. You know, he'd be, he'd be your boy early One on. One second you're clotheslining someone, the next second he's throwing you out. Right. right. Mm. <laughs> I'd like to see Damian Maya get someone's back for a rear naked choke, and then someone just push them both out of the ring. Both the guys, like, <laughs> both tumble out that's together. That's the way you get Maya out. You wait for him to get on someone's back, and you just topple him over. You push him over. Both well, Maya's the type of guy where, honestly, if you pick him up, there's so many things he does with his legs, you know, 
that uh, that maybe that's when the flying arm bar comes into he's play. He's taking And you're with going. Him. Yeah, he's taking someone yeah, with you're him. you're going yep. with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. So it's almost like, do you stay away from him? I like the strategy of getting Tyron Woodley out just because he's the champ and, you know, uh, he, he fits that mentality, a tough, grinding wrestler. Yep, so you don't yep. want him there at the end. All right, Jake, last question. Who do you think would be some of the guys that you would have alliances with where you just, you, you know, all, we kept all you guys separate so nobody could chat and pregame for this. But all it takes is like a wink, you know, or some kind of acknowledgement, whether it's someone you fought before or it's just someone you've trained before and you just know you, you give each other the look like, hey, we're on the same side till the very end. Who do you think would be some of your homies? Uh, I'd probably say maybe like a Matt Brown, you know, we're cool or, or even Robbie maybe. I don't know. Mm -hmm. It's, that's a, yeah, that's a good question. I mean, yeah, it's, that's a, I don't know. I, I, but I think everybody's transparent. There's nobody that's going to, you can't trust anybody, especially in what, come on, no way. <laughs> Guys, yeah, you in the back when you're not looking. <laughs> Between now and April 22nd, no one's going to ask you this set of questions, right, leading up to your fight versus Mike Perry? I'm, sh not a ch I'm sure not. All no right. way. I don't, I don't think Mike Perry is a very <laughs> popular guy. I could see everyone he might go out early going too. after him in the Rumble first. I hear you. I hear you there. <laughs> All right. He let me might look like he's crowd surfing with yeah. that many hands. <laughs> yeah. <right at> the <laughs> <time now. laughs> Let's turn it over to Goes here. What do you have for Jake Ellenberger, Goes? Crowd surfing. <laughs> Jake, Jake, before we start on the current matchup, I want to go back a little bit. Uh, the last fight, did, did you feel like you were able to close the book on that? Is there closure with that? Because it kind of ended a little bizarre, and I, I feel like a lot of people felt like they didn't see the whole fight play out. Were you able to get closure with that fight yet, or is that still an open book? It, no, it, it, it didn't. It, there really wasn't. But you know, I, I've I've just moved on. My I've just moved on. I I have to. But uh, it was it was very kind of uh, it was it was kind of um, just let leave a bad taste in your mouth. You know, with the way more so with the way the commission dealt with it. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, listen, Moffat all did his job. Like, trust me, I'm I'm gonna do the same thing. Uh, I'm gonna fight until the ref tells me not to fight. And. Uh, so it, it, it's nothing against him at all. Um, the way the commission handled it, we, you know, we, we've had a, a couple of attorneys involved. We we filed for a, a a hearing, which you have to get picked up by the commission to even get it to get a hearing. Um, to which the you know the commissioner, he he basically he had made the call because I, I spoke with her being about the about the thing. You know, he wanted to make it a cage malfunction or in in some way restart the fight. The commissioner said no, it was not a cage malfunction. He made the call, um, and then and then he just go. He just went dark. He didn't he didn't respond. He didn't. He said he'd talk to us um, over the phone. Then he said, you know, uh, a couple weeks go by now. He says talk speak to the attorney general. So it was very uh, just very unprofessional the way the, the Nevada State Athletic Commission dealt with this. Very um, disheartening. And, uh, you know, but I've moved on. I've definitely moved on myself. You know, John McCarthy pulled me in the back of the MMA awards. He was very pissed off. He had, he had told, he had said a lot of things to the commissioner um, about this. I just, in doing, in doing the, in did not handling it the right way, he said he was wrong and then and didn't keep the integrity of the sport. Um, oh, wow. You know, just, so yeah, John McCarthy was heated, man. He was, he, he told me how he felt and, and you know, whether that, it does not going to change anything, but, uh, you know he's definitely one of the one of the head guys, but um, yeah, that just just the way uh, just the way we got treated was very kind of very it was surprising first of all, and and I know how tough it is to deal with any sort of commission, um, get a hearing, let alone anything overturned, but to not even hear the case was um, to which they had originally said, of course, absolutely, they no. gave us a date, and then here comes you know if a week comes by, no, we we just not been has not been picked, and so it's like. I, we're not even knowing what's going on, but uh, you know, more so Bob Benny was just very. Uh, but yeah, to answer your question, not not really. There was there was nothing ever happened. Um, you know, I've, I've had a lot of good feedback, but uh, yeah, I've moved on. Jake, you had mentioned uh, John McCarthy, and, and for people who don't realize what had happened, is he got his foot stuck in the cage, mm -hmm. and, and they the just, tough finale late last year against George Masvidal, right? I, you mentioned John McCarthy. I mean, do you feel like whether it's the commissions or the UFC or just kind of the, over, the people who oversee the sport that when stuff like that happens, they're just kind of too quick to to let it go and not address it, so it doesn't. Like I could see this popping up again, the same exact situation, and still getting no clarity on it. 
Right. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, you know, and, and we've we've pulled a few examples in the past. I mean, there was a fight with Rich Franklin, I believe, and a, and a, and a fight with Mike Pierce that had two two had the same situations where they called the timeout. They had pulled their foot from the cage and even restarted the fight. But um, you know, so we, we had some we had some good uh, some good evidence. But uh, and I and I get it. I don't think anybody wants to look bad or. or um, say I was wrong or I didn't make the right call at the time, but you know, that's just reality. That's how, that's how sports in general work. Wrong calls happen all the time. You see, you know, I see guys win and lose in national championships, um, even this last, this last tournament and, and it's all referees discretion. And it's like, it, the call they make at the time is, is, is the best call they can do. And then, you know, they're not going to, they're not going to look at review the tape mill. And it, it's, it's a very, it's a very hard thing to do to, for someone to be like, Oh, you know, I was wrong. And right. so, uh, yeah, for and for me in this situation too, it's going to happen again. Eventually, it's for sure it's going to happen again. And uh, you know, I, I've I've definitely, you know, I've moved past this, but you're going to see it again. And I don't I don't think anything's going to. I don't know who knows. I mean, it, it may be in a different state or a different commission. It, it could be handled differently, but not not uh, Nevada. What about the UFC? Have they told you how they're going to treat it? Is it a loss, like it appears on your record? Is it a a formal loss on the record? But Jake, we're going to run that back or treat it as a fight that didn't happen? Like, is do they have a feeling towards it all? No, you know, I mean, I've, I've, I've Dan reached out to me. You know, he, uh, he wasn't very happy with the way they handled it either. He, and it, it's, it's definitely out of their hands. I mean, the commission makes their call, and then that's the no, that's I get the that part of the fight. So. I get that part, okay. but but I'm yeah, talking about like, can't. are they? Do they lead you to believe like that's just a fight that didn't happen? So it's it's not like they're looking at it like. Hey, you know, you could be looking at a two-fight losing streak if you lose this fight, being that they're, you know, like, that, you see what I'm saying? So are they just looking at it as, like, a fight that didn't happen and, and it, it doesn't hurt your standing with them, with the UFC? Right, right. That's fair to say, yeah. Okay. I would agree. All right. Sorry, mm -hmm. Ghost. Uh, yeah, Jake, they didn't give you your win bonus or anything that night, did they? It was just the show money? No. Uh-uh. No. No. Oh, okay. I, I guess is that something not. <laughs> you would have felt comfortable pushing for? Or is it just – I mean, uh, you know, when when something unfortunate like that happens, I guess, you know, we, it's easy for us when we're not fighters to, <clears throat> to remember that's also now half your potential pay for that night you just lost. So it's not just the loss. For but sure. It's the money too. For sure. I mean, it's – exactly. You know what I mean? And it's – yeah, it's just. I mean, it, listen. If I, you know, if a guy has a better night than me and, and he gets his hand raised, he does. I can, I can swallow that pill. I can take a loss. But uh, just the way that was handled, it really left a bad taste in my mouth. I mean, I, I could have continued the fight. Absolutely, I, I was looking forward to it, and that's how it's the call they were going to make. And, and unfortunately, they didn't. But yeah, it, it does. When you know, when it's when it comes down to uh, to income, and, and uh, then then it definitely becomes a bigger, a bigger problem. And you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully, this doesn't happen again. I, I guess along those lines, Jake, and, and this we get a lot of different answers to this question, but would would you prefer a, a different pay structure where it's not show money and win bonus, where it would be kind of a flat rate, I guess, even if it were a little less than the total of your show and win money? Or do you, do you like having that motivation that you know you're going to basically double your pay if you win? That's a good question. That's a good question. I mean, it's, it's, it's always uh... – you know, motivator with, with the bonuses they give. And, and, uh, um, but yeah, it's, it's tough. There's no, you know, you can, you can't really, you know, you can guarantee, obviously you can guarantee, uh, you know, your show money, but, uh, it, it is, it's one of those things where at the end of the day, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta get your hand raised. You gotta find a way to win. And, and, uh, it's, it's definitely a motivation, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's the ideal pay structure. No, I, I, I would agree. Let's use hard numbers. Let's just say you're a 50 and 50 guy. Would you rather them pay you eighty to show, and that's it? So you'd make less, win or lose, um, but it's guaranteed. Right, right. <laughs> I don't know. That's tough, man. I don't know. Um, I got to imagine most people would do that. I, I don't know. I'd have to think about it. <laughs> Jake probably wants us to ask more battle royal questions. <laughs> 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 yeah, go, go back to that battle royal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the final, the final four. <laughs> the final four. Hey Jake, you, you got Mike Perry in front of you, and I'm sure in your preparation, at some point you watched the Alan Joban fight. Uh, did you feel in that yeah. fight that maybe? 
Perry may, to ha may have had an off night, or do you feel like Joe Ban may have uh, exposed some weaknesses in that fight, that some that maybe you can capitalize on? I, I think a little of both. I think um, I think Joe Bond did he did uh, kind of you show some weaknesses, but at the same time, I think he, Joe Bond had a had a good had a good night. Um, you know, there's, there's there's a blueprint really to beat anybody. I think there's definitely a, a schematic that uh, Joe Bond played uh, played well into, but. Uh, and, and he's not an easy guy to fight either. But I think with with uh, with Perry, you know, he's he's a pretty straightforward guy, and uh, he's a, he, I would say he's a little bit more predictable, a little bit easier to figure out than most of these guys. Jake, I believe this is going to be your 19th fight in the UFC. Can you go back to fight number one with the UFC and maybe tell us what are the biggest differences between a the UFC now and them back then, and Jake Ellenberger today and Jake Ellenberger in that mm -hmm. first fight. The Condit fight, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Yes, um, September nineteenth, two thousand nine. It was Carlos Condit. Yeah, I, I got a call to to step up. Chris Lytle got hurt. I got called by uh, my manager at the time, was Monty Cox. He called me and said we had an opportunity in about about two weeks before the fight. And I said, of course. Um, I was training at. I was in Omaha. I was going to college at uh, Nebraska Omaha. Funny enough, I was in the. Oh, I think I was in the wrestling room. And and uh, when he called me, but um. I mean, so much has changed. I would, you know, even a fun fact: my first win in the UFC was at UFC 108 against Mike Pyle, and so I think that's there's a little, uh, there's a little, uh, a, a little uh, energy and power moving, you know, to fight night 108. So I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take that in and use that for for all that I can. But uh, as far as the the use of the the platform, the I mean the you, you just the pay per views the um, Everything in the sport has changed so much. I mean, I look back to even when I was just a fan to now. It's like you, guys fighting for a world title for ten thousand dollars. Uh, yeah, you look at like the Nate Corys, the Rich Franklin, like the the guys back. You know, the Chuck Liddell. Like it's it's quite crazy. It's quite crazy. I mean, even even when I was start, starting starting uh, my MMA career, there was there was it was something I loved to do. Was come competition. There was no. Um, there was no like, yo, I'm gonna. This is what I'm gonna do for a living. But uh, it got to that point where there, where there was, you know, the income. I get to do what I love and and uh, and, and before. But as far as far as the the mainstream, you know, the Fox deal, the um, the big pay per view draws that the attention is getting, it's it's been monumental. The UFC is a it's a definitely a global global change. But um, yeah, as far as myself too, um, yeah, I've, I've learned a lot about myself. I've, I've uh, yeah, I'm still I'm still grateful, and I I think that uh, a lot of a lot of fighters lose sight that this is definitely a, a privilege to do, a privilege to compete, um, and an honor. So I, I uh, you know I I get to do what I love, and, and, and I enjoy every uh, every minute of it because I know uh, that day's gonna come where where we gotta we gotta move on, and we can't do this anymore. But uh, it's still it's very exciting, very exciting to still be doing this. Dan, Tom, what do you have for Jake? Hey, Jake, when I break down a guy like Mike Perry, two things immediately kind of jump off the paper. One is obviously, you know, his knockout power. He does seem to have some heavy hands there. But two is I kind of like to call it the mental intangible. I'm sure there's plenty of more, you know, uh, you know, impolite ways to refer to that when talking about Mike Perry and his personality. But there is really something um, there when a guy has this kind of crazy belief in himself, right? And as silly as he might sound, we've kind of seen that in different iterations of fighters from Conor McGregor and, and all the way down. So I guess my question is, you know, we can't you can't divulge game, game plan or anything like that. But what is the Jake Ellenberger now who, you know, by the way, Jake, you have one of the most craziest, you know, when you look at Jake Ellenberger's, who, who he's fought in the welterweight division, it, it's arguably top five, in my opinion, top three as far as guys who have had, you know, the toughest road. So with everything you've seen, Jake, when you look at a guy like Mike Perry, you can't say game plan, but I want to know what, what's Jake Ellenberger's attitude of now uh, when, you, when you're breaking down a guy like Mike Perry? That's, that's a good question. Um, you know, it's funny. I see, I see Mike Perry. I see a lot of uh, – just that that young uh, that young hungry kid, um, but you know, but definitely has a lot of uh, there's a lot of hole, you know there's definitely a lot of holes, a lot of uh, ways to kind of take advantage of this. You know, I think even too with myself, uh, I, I feel like I've you know mentally have gotten stronger, and, and more specifically, even in the last few weeks, um, been I've, I, you know been being pushed by uh, you know some people in, in more so my my conditioning program, but. Uh, 
the, the, the workouts are, are they're designed to fail. They're 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 completely designed to fail. But all, all they're made you know make you do is is just not quit. And uh, you know, for me, it's it's always the fight with the fight with yourself is always bigger than the fight with your opponent. I think. And uh, you know, Mike Perry, the, the, yeah, sure, he's he's. He's, he's talented. He believes in himself. I mean, he. I don't think there's a guy in the UFC that, that you couldn't say that about. But, uh, you know, for me, I, I view myself differently, more importantly, than I view him. So I oh, I would hold myself to a higher standard. And I, and I do think there is a, there's something to say about um, experience. So it's, you know, it's, uh, for me, I'm, I, you know, I see a lot of, uh, I, I see a lot of that, uh, you know, when I was at, when his, you know, a little younger, younger uh, kid coming up and then seeing the lights and, and I can, and I can relate to how he's probably going to feel. But, uh, right. you know, that being said, there's a lot of vulnerability there, a lot of vulnerability, but you don't really know that when you're in the moment. You know, so for me and, and, uh, and the guys I fought, it's like, there's, there's, there's nothing that I'm, I'm going to see that I haven't already, but more so from my, from the way I view myself and the relationship I have between, uh, myself like pushing myself um you know I, I expect a lot out of myself and then whatever you know whatever whatever he's gonna bring to the table i uh i'm gonna find a way to come out on top get my head raised well like i said with your record jake um you know it certainly <clears throat> ba- it certainly backs uh, backs up what you're saying factually and you know as far as you being physically and mentally battle tested which is what i'm you know which, which is what i'm getting from you and that's a great thing to draw off of going into a matchup like this so yeah i completely hear what you're saying Yeah, no, I appreciate it. It's it is it's funny every every time uh, every time you get in there. I mean, you feel like you can predict, and you really can't predict anything. All you can predict is chaos. A fight is chaotic. Right. Every single minute of every round is chaos, and you can all you can do is prepare your mind and prepare yourself as much as you can. You know, it's sure that yeah, it's sure there's strategy, but it, it, it it's like. You know, people gonna people go to the gym and, and work out and train and feel comfortable. They get comfortable training with these, you know, their their friends and have fun or whatever. But yeah, you get in a street fight; it's a different story. It's a completely different story. It feels different. You know, the the uh, the emotionality is different. I feel like that's why, um, you know, me being in this position too. I, I know what it feels. I, I I've felt it eighteen different times, and, and so using that to my advantage. Um, I know where I can, you know. I know. I know where I can. Uh, I know where I do well, and I can keep that and uh, keep that moving forward and use it as momentum. Look at the fucking hit list of fighters this guy's had to fight. I was just looking. at You're that. spot on, Dan. Yeah. So check this out. I'm gonna go in reverse. Masvidal, Matt Brown, Tarek Safadine, Stephen Thompson, Josh Koscheck, Kelvin Gastelum, Robbie Lawler, Roy Jeez. McDonald, Nate Marquardt, Jay Haran, Martin Campman, Diego Sanchez, Jake Shields. Sean Pearson, Carlos Eduardo Rocha, John Howard, Mike Pyle, Carlos Condit. And even before that, he had 25 fights. So even before to get to the UFC, there was a Rick story, a Pat Healy, which is never a, an easy payday, um, a, a Jose Pele, <laughs> Jose, Jose Landy uh, Johns, also known as Pele, mm-hmm. and uh, Jay Haran. Wow. That sounds like the Battle Royal list, right? The, the, you've been through the Battle Royal yeah. in a way. It's just it wasn't all in one night. Honestly, on, on your UFC schedule, there's – yeah, I'm not going to say the names. I see maybe two cupcakes a little bit. But the rest have been <laughs> fucking killers. Cupcakes. <laughs> yeah, you know, two that, that were maybe a little easier on the schedule. You know, like when you get that – you get the – okay, we'll use the Cornhuskers. That's probably your team. And you look at the schedule and you're like, oh, we got Appalachian State. That's an easy one. That's kind of what I mean. <laughs> and then after that, it's like right. Notre Dame and USC sure. and Miami, Florida, okay. and Penn State. That's kind of what I meant. I'm telling Sean <laughs> Pearson. You oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I didn't name names. I did not name names. <laughs> Isn't that guy caught? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not welcomed in Toronto. All right. Uh, well, Jake, uh, we, took you, we took you all over the place, but I hope you had a blast. We had a blast having you. And, uh, oh, I always do, man. Always do. Thanks, guys. Good luck with the rest of your camp. I hope you have a, a great birthday. Uh, and congratulations to you it. and John Orlando on the Action Junkies podcast <laughs> that drops every Wednesday. Oh, thanks, man. I've tuned in. You guys look like you're having a blast doing it. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of fun, you know. You guys have uh, you guys have done an exceptional job too. We've we've uh, we've looked up to what you guys have done and created. So uh, you guys you guys are definitely uh, kind of an inspiration. So 
Thank you, guys. Oh, thank well, you. thank you, sir. All right. Well, enjoy your day, and we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good. All Thanks, right. Guys. Take care. That's Jake Ellenberger. He's such a likable guy. Right? Oh, yeah. Seriously, that was one of the funnest interviews we've had with him. He, uh, What I like about Jake is he, when you ask him a question, it takes. It looks like he takes his time to collect his thoughts, but he gives you great answers. Speaking of that Louisville event from a year, uh, a few years ago, I actually went out a few days early. Uh, you remember Joe Fernandez, UFC PR? Mm -hmm. um, I went out there a few days early, and they did like a, a media tour I tagged along with, and it was Mark Munoz and Jake Ellenberger. That was kind of the first time I really got to know them. And Jake wasn't uh, fighting on the Louisville card. Munoz was. Um, but every time that they kind of tried the local media, you know, talking with Mark and tried to talk him up, Mark was always quick to point out Jake and that he's the, the next up-and-comer and keep an eye on him. And I think it was right after, what was it, that Condit fight, his uh, first one he lost in the UFC. Mm -hmm. Then he won six straight. Yeah, and then he won six straight. And it was right after that was when Jake uh, really wow. started taking off. So. No, it, it seems like a, a lifetime ago, but hell, you know, he, look how long he's been in the UFC now. You know, how many fights he's registered. And by the way, what must the audience think? You got a great question. You got a good question, I think. You got a great question. You got a great question. And I'm the lead host. <laughs> <laughs> the audience was thinking, the, talking this about buffoon's Rumble. talking about <laughs> Royal Rumbles and shit. Uh, get him out of there. So, so thanks, thanks a lot, guys, for really, really making me look like a jabroni over here. We got to take this commercial. Uh, go grab a Coke, a Coke Zero, a beer, whatever it is you listen to as you uh, accompany us for two hours. We'll be right back. Uh, we'll double up here. I'm not going to lie to you. And we'll come back. We'll finish up with some calls, and we'll talk some more in MMA news.
Oh shit, man. That piece is Got him. You know that scene in Star Wars where Darth Vader tells Luke he's his father? What if I walked in right after with my voice and was like, I'm your Uncle Walter. Can I get a lift home? That'd be crazy, right? Anyway, here George and goes. All right, coming down the home stretch of another fine edition of MMA Junkie Radio. I want to jump on this topic right, right quick, see what the guys think. Bellator 180, the pay-per-view price has been set. It's $49.95 for high definition, $10 less than what we're used to getting from the UFC, but I believe a bump up from what they charged at Bellator 120, which was their first offering. If I'm not mistaken, that one was $29.95 or $39.95. So, anyway, we'll start at the very end. Dan Tom, follow him on Twitter, at the MMA Analyst. Sorry, at the MM Analyst. You want to get it right because uh, he does great breakdowns for these uh, fights that are coming up. Dan, what do you think of that price? I, but here's the thing. I don't know how they, you know, um, how they, you know, figure out prices as far as like analytics and what they go off of you know at that level but i'm more of a subscriber to the theory that i believe uh, if they would have made it like 29.95 that they would have brought in a lot more people and subsequently you know uh, cut down or at least mitigate potential piracy you're never going to stop piracy but i believe a smaller price point would take away from the piraters and put more money in their pocket that's just my opinion dan stop i think they went to ten dollars too high or possibly 20 I think that's 30 to maybe even 40 range. Fans are willing to bite the bullet when when you're getting up to 50. I mean, you're talking UFC now, and they're already having to pay for the UFC. I, I could see a lot of people skipping it because of the price. I, I mean, you could do a $20 one. I could see a lot of people skipping it just out of principle or spite or whatever. But at $50, I, I think it's less about, oh, uh, I think it's less about making a point or principle, and I think it's more as like, dude, that's just too expensive, especially if there's a UFC that, that month i got to buy also, you know. All of a sudden, that's an extra 100 110 bucks on your cable bill that month. That, that That's tough. I mean, I, I think it's a good card, and, and I would want to see it if I'm if the company didn't reimburse me and I had to pay my own money. I'd probably buy it, but I know that a lot of people, that's just uh, that's a price point, like I said, I $10, $20, just too high. I think uh – I, I can live with this, but I think for me, a 39 was probably what I was thinking. Because if we go too low, 20, don't forget the guy to split it with right, the cable companies. Right. So even if you sell, you know, 100,000 or 200,000, but you're only getting 10 from each, like, are you really accomplishing, I guess, that, that big revenue that they want to get from a pay-per-view? Um, at the same time, do you also want to, by putting that price out, admit that this is that either Bellator is inferior or that that our products inferior I think they have to kind of be somewhat in line you know with what the UFC does um, so it's funny because you have to figure out what's that breaking point of yeah we got the extra money you know to pay and and to put something out because yeah I guess if you're an MMA fan you pretty much budget 60 bucks a month for the UFC um, so a 30 I, or 40, you can kind of like talk mm -hmm. yourself into it, mm -hmm. but you're basically... We'll stay home for... We won't go out for, to dinner right. one time. Um, yeah, how about you guys? What, what do you think? You like that I number? 30 is that sweet spot for me. 30 on the dot or 39? Uh, 30 on the dot, okay. around there somewhere. Um, when I Did look you at say 32? 29.99, but 30 so pretty 30, much, 30, yeah. and you want to go as low as 20? No, 30. Well... No, 30. 30, 30? Yeah, okay. 29 95 yeah. uh -huh, And I was good with 40 and this is 50 but yeah. Well, whenever I look at these cards now, the way I look at it is if the main event were to fall off, which has happened yeah. a bit to Bellator, am I still going to get my money's worth? So now when you look at this card, a lot of people feel like Fedor Emelianenko, Matt Mitrione, that's the matchup that everybody wants to see. So right. I'm looking at that as the, the headliner. If that falls off, am I okay with Chael and Vanderlei? And the answer is no. I wouldn't be okay with. But they have two that. title fights. They announced Lorenz they versus do, uh, Lima, and Lima's fights have not sucked mm -hmm. by any means. Him and Daly right. was solid, and him and Korshkov was solid. Uh, and Lorenz, we've been praising him on the show. All uh, alliances aside, he's an exciting fighter. And then Chandler, I think, has proven to be an exciting fighter. He had a KO, arguable KO of the year last year, and then a great fight versus Benson Henderson. So they have come strong. Now, are they those names that sell? They're not yet. Uh, they might get I don't you know to that tune in to Spike, but they're not going to get you to spend fifty thing. bucks. If this card stays intact, 
I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. But if one fight, even if one of the lower fights falls off, I think it starts to get into that point where I go, eh, it's, I, I just can't do it. I mean, what's really going to happen? Is like Mitrion going to get kidney stones or some shit? I mean, what's really going to happen? Yeah, really. Uh, well, you know what? Um, if he does, I, I, uh, I know that there are. He was wrong about that, wasn't he? Yeah, I think it was. I thought Cranberry I thought that was, was one of the healthy. Good things for that. Yeah, it's just that we kept Tito a little bit past, so there wasn't really a point in time to really look it up. But I remember he mentioned Tito Ortiz yesterday mentioned stay away from cranberry juice. But I think that's the thing alluding that drink to to help filter out your to, to what fighter science. With. Maybe you watched the movie The Departed and he was like, "You don't ever want that guy coming up and insulting your drink. Stay away from cranberry juice." Maybe that's what he meant. <laughs> if you want cranberry juice, do not go to the waitresses here at Mandalay Bay. You you'd have to drink like ten of those drinks to get any any cranberries. Wait, tell me about The Departed. I like that movie. I don't remember that scene. What what happened? Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio orders a cranberry juice, and the guy goes, "What's the matter?" Cranberry juice? What? Oh, you, you, you yeah. on your cycle? I forget the word he uses exact, but it's along those lines. You know that movie's almost 12 years old? Can you believe that? What? Time flies, man. It, it's it's on TV a lot, and the only way you would know that, or that the reason, like it's dated, like you, you know it's that old, is all the cell phones in the movie. Because they're all like little Flips. Nokia's <laughs> yeah, and nice. flip phones yeah. and yeah. stuff. Like, that's the one thing these days that can date a movie really quick is the phones they use. It's the Matrix original. Yeah. We got to take our last break. We'll be back to uh, close up shop. You're listening to MMA Junkie Radio on Sirius XM, Rush 93. Stay close. Sound like my mic is right. Men, and because they can, they are gorgeous George and Goes, and this is MMA Chunky Radio. Alright, we gotta get out of here pretty soon. There is one matchup uh, to announce. Marcin Tabora. Andre Arlovsky headed to Singapore. Arlovsky needs a win. He's had uh, like four in a row. He started off coming back to UFC with four in a row. I think he's had four losses in a row. He really needs one, man. Uh, that guy is like one of the last fixtures, I guess, from, you know, like that older era, actually. Because we was, he was, 
He was with the UFC even before Tough, so even pre-Tough, but part of uh, what used to be Zufa. You know who goes under the radar when we talk about that? Mm. Nick Diaz and Robbie Lawler. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They were around mm -hmm. for a long time, too. They were, yeah. Cyborg's in the news. She, I guess she was uh, training with a TNA wrestler, so she says she feels like she has a partner, and now she's looking for Ronda Rousey to find a partner so they maybe they can have some fun on a Royal Rumble or some sort of a tag team. Uh, I'll tell you what, man. Cyborg's what a ridiculous got topic. Yeah. Who ever bring up a little bit of an obsession there with Ronda Rousey. I think <laughs> with Ronda's fall, I mean, that, that's like, hey, I'm looking for the money fight, right? When yeah. she's pushing and shoving. And really, I think she's she's on a good path to just getting Durandamy to fight her in uh, July. Her adopted hometown now because she's Brazilian, but she lives in Huntington Beach. Anaheim would be a 10-minute drive uh, for her, a lot of her friends and family to see her, and Durandamy probably, if, unless that hand is going to require surgery, that seems to fill in uh, that timeline. I'd like to see that fight. I think she should focus on making that fight happen, but she's out there. She's poking different spots, and uh, Ronda Rousey's usually on, on the other end of every third poke she throws. Ah, good for her. Come main event podcast dropped show number 250. So congrats to Ben Folks and Chad Dundas. They've been doing this for a while, and uh, they drop every Tuesday, and 250 is a solid number. Congrats, boys. UFC Fight Night 109 tickets on sale this week. Gustafsson and Teixeira in Sweden. Elima McFarlane versus Jessica Middleton. They co-headline Bellator 178, April 21st. And, of course, the Bellator 180 pay-per-view has been set at 49.95. So regardless of what we thought, that's, that's what it's set at. Also, Charles Oliveira is not committed to lightweight. Says he may fight Max Holloway in a rematch in the future. So maybe he will drop back to 145. But, you know, he's got to prove he can get there because that's kind of – it wasn't just how his body felt. He just wasn't even making the, the damn weight. So that hurt him a lot. So I want to thank Dan Stupp for co-hosting the last two uh, days, Dan, and, of course, everything we've been able to accomplish, uh, you know, outside of the show. It was some fun chats as always, and I guess we'll see you in about two months. Cool, yeah. No, I appreciate you guys having me and look forward to the gathering. Mm -hmm. Dan Tom, as always, coming in and uh, – Breaking down fights, talking news. We always have a blast with you, so thank you very much. Oh, man, thank you guys for having me. Always a pleasure to come in. We look forward to your breakdown for UFC 210 with Cormier and Anthony Johnson. Follow him on Twitter at the MM Analyst. Follow Dan Stupp on Twitter at Dan Stupp. want to thank our producer, Sam. Always doing a great job on Tuesdays. Thanks, Sam. And uh, goes. Awesome job. Thanks. Solid work. I, of course, took it to another level. I was fantastic. I have to mention that. Thanks to all the comments that come through, always on Facebook, all of our social media. I'll try to get to it after the show. Tomorrow we'll be joined by Gaston Bolanos and former NFL defense lineman Sean Sean Jerman. Sean, Sean Merriman. We're out of here. Be champions.